Hello and welcome to Sensational South. I'm Harish Upadhyay. Over the next 30 minutes, we bring you all the major news and newsmakers from across South India. A top story today obviously comes from Tamil Nadu. There's a fresh friction between the governor and the government, and the uneasy equation has hit a new low. With the governor first asking for the dismissal of tainted minister Sendil Balaji and then putting that order on hold. This has raised several questions on whether the governor had gone beyond what the constitution empowers him to do and what are the options before the government will debate this. But first the story. Anti-governor posters sprung up across Chennai. Several outside DMK headquarters spotlighting union ministers with the alleged pending criminal cases. These amid the surprise move by Governor R.N. Ravi to dismiss Minister Sendil Balaji from Tamil Nadu's cabinet. The Dravida Munnet Trakaragam has decided to take on the governor politically. The governor is not acting as per the constitution. He is acting as, as a slave, a ch as a chamcha of the BJP. Escalating his standoff with Chief Minister Stalin, Governor Arun Ravi said that Sendil Balaji's continuation as a minister will impact the ongoing ED investigation and may lead to the breakdown of the constitutional machinery in the state. But nearly four hours later, Raj Bhavan sources said that the governor informed Chief Minister M.K. Stalin about his decision to keep the dismissal order in abeyance. In his letter to M.K. Stalin, Governor Arun Ravi said, and I quote, I have been advised by the Honourable Union Minister of Home Affairs that it would be prudent to seek the opinion of the Attorney General. I am approaching the Attorney General for his opinion also. Meanwhile, the order of dismissal of Minister Sendil Balaji may be kept in abeyance until further communication from me. The Governor has no right, as per the Constitution, to remove any Minister without the knowledge of the Chief Minister. The mere charges will not make him disqualified from any offence. So what is here, what is happening here is a funny thing. Meanwhile, the opposition parties strain their guns at the ruling DMK, demanding that Sendil Balaji be dropped from the cabinet till the enforcement directorate completes its investigation. Sendil Balaji should have been dismissed by this time. Or he should have resigned, uh, owning moral responsibility, he should have resigned. The same Stalin in 2018 demanded the resignation of the then AIADMK minister Vijay Bhaskar, who faced a criminal case. Governor Arun Ravi, in a six-page missive to Chief Minister Stalin, accused the latter of an unhealthy bias in retaining Sendil Balaji as a minister. Now, as the governor awaits the legal opinion in this case, the bigger question is whether the governor is well within his limits to dismiss a minister. With Purnima Murli, Ashraya Kanan for CNN News 18. Well, to debate this further, we have an eminent panel joining us today. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Narayanan Tirupati of the BJP and we have Mr. Uh, T.K. Selangovan of the DMK. We also have uh, Kaleswaram Raj, a Supreme Court advocate and a constitutional expert joining us today. Uh, I'll come to you first, Mr. Kaleswaram Raj. How would you see this? Because many are saying that this looks like an overreach by the governor, but many are also pointing out to a specific line in the constitution which says, a minister shall hold office during the pleasure of the governor. And many are interpreting that as what empowers the governor seeking a removal of a minister. How would you read this? Sir? Uh, thank you for having me in the show. This first question itself is a very uh, brilliant question which goes to the root of the whole issue. Uh, in fact, the pleasure aspect which is contained in Article 164 of the Constitution will have to be read necessarily along with yes. 163 of the Constitution. 163 and 164 will have to be subjected to a combined reading. Though there is a pleasure okay. clause in these, con in, in these provisions, hmm. basically 163 says that the governor can only act in accordance with the advice of the cabinet, the chief minister as well as the ministers. Hmm. So, understand until the cabinet advises him to remove a minister, 
or the chief minister asks him to do that, the governor doesn't have that independent power even by invoking pleasure doctrine. This is a kind of extra constitutional delusion with the Raj Bhavan, which the constitution does not provide for. It's unfortunate that this country is still discussing the basic question as to whether the governor can remove a minister or the chief minister. Somebody was telling today that even the chief minister can be removed. This is fallacious. Constitution doesn't provide that. Constitution says that it is within the domain of the elected government to choose to make a cabinet or to unmake a cabinet, to make a minister or to unmake a minister. The minister can resign or the chief minister can ask the minister to do, do that. The governor has absolutely no business okay. in choosing a minister or dismantling a minister. Okay, yes. you're saying Article 164 read with 163 makes it clear exactly. that the governor exactly. can't take an independent decision as such. He's bound by the advice of the Council exactly. of Ministers. I'll come to you, Mr. Tirupati. Many are saying that this further erodes the kind of... Uh, problem that was already there, lack of trust between the government and the governor. Do you think this decision of uh, the governor further will now make it difficult uh, for any sort of a smooth uh, governance or smooth equation between the uh, government and the governor? Oh, no, see, there is no smooth uh, equation because the governor is against the corruption. So the governor is doing his uh, duty, hmm. his responsibility, see to it that the a uh, vote taken by the minister uh, should be properly administered, properly followed. And Mr. Sindhil Balaji has not done that. So it is very unfortunate that people are talking about this governor issue for the last two days. But it is really unfortunate that, uh, you know, uh, but no, you nobody But do you think the governor has acted the... in an unbiased manner? No, you mean to say Sindhil Balaji behaved in an uh, unbiased manner? He has taken money. He has taken money for jobs. 3 lakhs for a contractor job, okay. 2 lakhs for a, you know, a, a mechanics job. And the Supreme Court has condemned like anything. The Supreme Court has given strictures. The Supreme Court uh, had ordered the uh, ED to, you know, investigate, continue the investigation. And the governor is the thought that uh, by the Mr. Sandil Balaji will influence uh, the investigation. And the state government did not, uh, uh, you know, form the team. Only today they have done it. So we need to understand in what circumstances, Mr. Okay. Uh, R. N. Ravi, the governor has done it. Okay, I'll, I'll go to Mr. Elangavan. Mr. Elangavan, uh, the argument that the BJP is making is that these are, uh, it, it's it's not a usual circumstance. That's why the action is also not something that we see usually. That's one. Second, the governor says the chief minister has been unbiased. Biased, beg your pardon. How would the government now take this forward, sir? No, see, the problem now is, is <coughs> Chandel Balaji is accused of charges and the, the matter was already heard by the Supreme Court, Ch Chennai High Court, and they have not punished him. So far, he is, there are charges against him, but he was, there, no, there was no conviction against him, one thing. Secondly, the governor is supporting many corrupt people. We have sought permission, uh, his clearance, for proceeding with many of the former ADMK ministers. But the governor is silent on that issue. Why should, if he is clean, if he, was, he is against mm. corruption, he should have given sanction for prosecuting the uh, ministers of the ADMK government. He didn't do that. So, one thing is, governor but, but cannot Mr. remove Mr. Elangavan, or, is the party uh, principally against the this idea of the governor removing a minister independently, arbitrarily? Is the party against it? No, the, the law, per, law prevents. The constitution says that it, the, power, the hmm. governor has no power to remove a minister. Because the, the questions that have come up over the last two, three days, sir, the government itself is, is wrong. Why was, oh. why was DMK, oh. sir, because of the stance, Mr. the question that's arising Mr. in the last Stalin two, three days is, then why was the DMK seeking commander. governor's intervention or removal of Vijay Bhaskar from uh, Vijay Bhaskar. the minister's role in the earlier government? Yeah, but he was silent on that. <laughs> the government were silent when we I sought Mr. that. They Stalin did not demanded. move. They did not act. They did not, they did not ask the chief minister to drop him. Now he is taking the action. Because okay. then the governors knew that they had okay. no power to remove. But now the governor thinks that he has the power to remove. 
which is not the constitution does not say that okay. uh, he has powers to remove okay one question that i would uh, like to take to mr tirupati is do you believe within the state unit of the bjp there is a fear that this is derailed the campaign against uh, mr salen and uh, mr sentil bala's uh, corruption charges because over the last 3 4 days all that we have seen is uh, what has happened between the governor and the government not much about the case or not much about sandeep bala ji you think this is given an option for the dmk to change the narrative in tamil nadu is that the fear that the bjp no, no. tamil nadu has no 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 absolutely there is no fear people in uh, tamil nadu no who is sandeep bala ji is this is mr same stalin who said sandeep bala ji is a hmm. fraud sandeep bala ji is a cheat sandeep bala ji is a land grabber and these are all the words told by mr salen so now people they know everything on september 1st 2018 the same mr salen had said that uh, the um, uh, vijay baskar should be dismissed by the governor and also the dgp so uh, opposition leader who was the deputy chief minister doesn't know constitution that time now as a chief minister is understanding the constitution so people have understood what the dmk is doing dmk is a corrupt party we have no fear at all the governor had just you know uh, through his letter had said that he will seek the opinion of the advocate general and uh, the, the order is kept in abeyance that simple i i don't want to comment on that because uh, let, uh, let the uh, let the decision come but what we say sendil bala ji should have been dismissed very long back because he is the one of the ministers okay. who is doing corruption to the core whether it is in the electricity department or in the task mark that is a, you know excise department the 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 dmk okay. is totally corrupt because okay. of the but minister. clearly the bjp We not very comfortable that. addressing what the governor has done and whether it's right or wrong there's no, a particular not, question that i would uh, like to take to mr kalishwaram raj i have never told i have never told you that you can't uh, come to a conclusion that uh, i am not comfortable okay i said i said Sir, a very clear can, can you give me a clear yes or no answer on whether no, you think the governor no no i am not reading there was an overreach on the part of the governor see i am not reading any exam see okay, i am not reading the mh the sir the governor says you should understand the governor don't, says don't the union home minister advised him the, to have done what so what so okay, what okay sir do you believe so the advice given by union home minister is right or wrong then sir according no, to what, what mr uh, ravi see, say if he has not taken the down. if he has not taken the um, the advice or the opinion from the advocate general let him take what is your problem what is there in it let him take it what is your problem so at least the understand. first step was probably too premature without the without following the due process then would you accept no, no, that, that at least no no you have to understand that it is uh, not done by bjp sir it is done by the governor's office what we demanded is the dismissal of uh, sandil bala okay. you have to understand that because it did them so many people as per mr salin's words okay okay fair enough i'll go to mr kaleshwaram raj mr kaleshwaram raj uh, two things very clear here one obviously there has been no advice from the council of ministers there no advice from mha there is a gray area here is the argument that comes in how does this get settled sir the question of law the question of uh, the governor and his powers because we have seen this in multiple cases especially uh, even in telangana in kerala on multiple issues i would rather tell that this issue has actually been settled and there is only a kind of you know pretended dilemma as far as the uh, uh, governorial power is concerned uh, the the center as well as the certain okay. uh, officers of the governor at various states pretend that it is not settled it is actually settled way back in 1974 by the constitution bench of the supreme court in shamsir singh okay. case interesting versus the state of punjab that is to say yes the constitution bench clarified without any ambiguity that the governor will always be bound hmm. by the advice by the advice given by the cabinet that is what the, the, therefore the it is the prerogative of the chief minister and the cabinet as a whole to decide as to the continuation or otherwise of a particular minister he can resign that's a different thing now we are actually mixing okay. these two things together it is one thing to ask about the ethical dimension of an ed probe or rather a selective probe as they the other side calls it 
or regarding the continuation of a person who is facing grave charge this is an ethical issue which is in which is separable from the second the two wrongs do not make a right okay for therefore if at all there Absolutely. is some grievance regarding the continuation of a minister the governor cannot set it right by doing an unconstitutional or rather an extra constitutional act that is what has been done this advice from the attorney general at all required should have been sought before doing the initial letter no no it should have been rather withdrawn the attorney general in all probability he is not going to advise okay. for a kind of dismissal as it has no proposed it has been no proposed by the governor it is rather hmm. constitutionally impossible therefore the, the position is very clear the Absolutely. governor is a representative he is only a type target he is only a constitutional figure head he cannot substitute the will of an elected yes he is only a constitutional figure head exactly yes sir there are multiple aspects to be discussed but unfortunately yeah, yeah. we are out of time on this debate but uh, very clearly the face of likely to continue we've had multiple flash points between the governor and the government likely to continue and perhaps get worse in the coming days well thanks a lot for joining us today on this show uh, mr narayan and tripathi mr elango and and uh, mr kaliswaram raj well how will this continue and how will the dmk government deal with this is something that we'll have to see in the coming days time for a quick break now on the other side we'll get you more stories from across south india